Coming up, celebrating planet Earth, the history of Earth Day, and simple things you can do to help save our planet. Also had student innovators. My project is called Worms for the Win. My project is called Project Poop. We'll introduce you to some young inventors who are helping solve big problems. I'm helping people in real time and at a such young age. I think that problem solving starts with youth. We're at the first ever National STEM Festival with the story. Then hoop dreams come true. I think like, you know, this is a dream. This is something I wrote down on a piece of paper when I was in like second grade, like get a basketball scholarship, play in the WNBA. Basketball star Caitlin Clark goes first overall in the most anticipated WNBA draft ever. We'll hear from Clark as she sets her sights on pro basketball. Plus, caught our eye. These baby goats are giving us all a reason to smile. We're at this zoo in Tennessee. And girl power. Princess Peach is starring in a brand new video game. And our Kids Edition correspondent has all the details. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. It's great to be with you. I'm on the West Coast this week, coming to you from Universal Studios Hollywood, which is owned by our parent company, NBC Universal. Always fun to be here on what is a gorgeous day. We have an awesome lineup ahead from Baby Goats to Princess Peach and our pop quiz with a California twist. And a little bit later on, we'll introduce you to a dance team here in Los Angeles that is proving nothing will get in the way of following their dreams. But let's begin with a story on many people's minds, especially this time of year, and that's protecting our planet. Earth Day will take place on April 22nd this year, and it got us thinking about the history and what you and your families can do to help out. We get more from our friend Ann Thompson. Every April, billions of people around the world get together and celebrate planet Earth. The very first Earth Day took place on April 22, 1970. A senator from Wisconsin organized a demonstration to bring attention to environmental issues. By 1990, people in more than 140 countries were celebrating Earth Day, and it's grown bigger ever since. Earth Day is a day to raise awareness about protecting the planet from things like pollution. Pollution is the introduction of harmful materials into the environment. So, for example, like trash you see on the side of the road or in your creek, that's pollution. Oil or chemical spills, those are considered pollution, car exhaust. But also noise can be pollution, right? Like if there's too much sound in the ocean and the whales can't hear each other, that's considered pollution. Or light can be pollution. Then there's deforestation. Forests can absorb lots of the planet warming gas, carbon dioxide. They also release oxygen for people to breathe. But when we cut trees down, much of that CO2 is sent back into the atmosphere, making climate change worse. The forest is an enormously important habitat for so many species. Lots of human activity, like driving cars powered by gasoline and people not properly disposing of garbage, adds to environmental problems. The number of garbage trucks that Americans fill each year would stretch halfway to the moon. So we throw a lot of stuff away. <laughs> So yes, recycling is a really important way you can help protect planet Earth. If you wanted to celebrate Earth Day, one idea is to tour your local recycling center. And by touring your local recycling center, you will learn to be a better recycler. And that's important because recycling not only saves energy, for example, one aluminum can that's recycled can power a TV for three hours. And it also means that you're not using raw material. Another thing you can do? It's almost ice cream season. And one easy thing you can do when you're at the ice cream shop is to select a cone instead of a cup. And that's just saving you one piece of trash. Ice cream cups and spoons can be pretty harmful because especially think about it if you're at the beach and you put it in an outdoor can, these pieces of trash are so lightweight that it's very easy for them to blow off the top of the can and go right into the water. And as we talked about, it's really bad for animals to get a hold of that stuff. 
We love to say that, you know, kids can make an impact. There's so much kids can do. In fact, kids can do a whole lot, like walk or ride a bike rather than ask your parents to drive you, turn off lights, TVs, and computers when you are not using them. And you can also host or join a neighborhood cleanup. We just tell kids, don't pick up anything sharp or dangerous. <laughs> Leave it alone. You don't have to pick up everything. And keep asking questions so together we can do a better job of protecting the planet. And thanks so much. Now we turn to a story about the power of creativity. Students from across the country were in Washington, D.C. this past weekend for the first ever National STEM Festival, proving you're never too young to make a difference. We learned about the story through our sponsor, Walton Family Foundation. These sensors will gather and The pH has to be between five. And I was able to prove that they can. Over here is like a nurdle hunting activity. So I invented the innovative and affordable prosthetic arm. They are inventors, designers, and problem solvers. My STEM project is the Kinetic Kids 2.0. It's going to power our world. My project is called Worms for the Wind. Tackling some big challenges like climate change. The title of my project is RecycleBot. And waste management. My project is called Project Poop. And helping shape the future through STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. What I love about STEM and STEM education in particular is the creativity. Creativity was on full display recently in Washington, D.C. More than 140 students from across the country gathered in the nation's capital for the first ever National STEM Festival presented by Explore and the U.S. Department of Education. I am just so happy to be here and this just, it's a really great opportunity to share my research. The National STEM Festival had applications from 2,549 students from across the country and today you're able to witness the work of 143 of the National STEM Champions. Uh, the goal of the STEM Festival is to celebrate and elevate our nation's brightest young minds um, and give them a platform to meet with corporate leaders um, and policymakers um, to understand that they are not the leaders of tomorrow, they're the leaders of today. The name of my project is the Rover Garden. Young leaders like Bryson Ward, a high school senior from Chicago, who was on a mission to get fresh produce to people living in communities lacking access to healthy food options. On my first test run, I realized collard greens would be the best thing to grow because it's sustainable and it can grow inside the kit perfectly fine. I'm helping people in real time and at a such a young age, only being a senior. And starting this as a sophomore in high school, it's absolutely incredible. Meantime, 10th grader Tushar Mehta from Pennsylvania invented an app to help people know if their discarded item is recyclable or not. It makes me feel good because more recyclable items are being thrown into the recycling bin and that really helps and affects me in a positive way because I know that a lot more of these trash items are being thrown into the proper bins. And speaking of waste, Trayana Sullivan Bunch from New York City invented a device that helps dog owners, well, clean up. The goal, to encourage community members to dispose responsibly. I think this is better than having a trash can because you can actually see the progress that the can has made and it can inspire you to want to help clean the community day by day. An early tornado warning system. Then there's Anirudh Rao, who we first introduced you to last month. These are the two drones as part of my project. The sixth grader from Colorado designed an early tornado warning system called Revere. It uses sensors and automated drones for accurate early warning detection. So I first identified the problem and then I did some research about this and then I found out that tornadoes produce infrasound. Then I brainstormed, I drew pictures and uh, used Legos to create these devices. And then was when I started building all my sensors. Kids underscoring the importance of STEM, building both our futures and theirs. STEM, it's all over the place. Like, you will always see it anywhere. Even if you think you don't like it, I guarantee you've used it at some point and enjoyed it. Let's think about science not as somebody in a lab in a lab coat, 
um, but all the different ways STEM impacts us, from plumbers to electricians to construction workers to pilots to our doctors. Um, there are so many different pathways. I think that problem solving starts with youth. We're the next generation, so if we don't start being the change that we want to see, then it's just never going to happen. Meantime, another story making headlines this week, women's basketball. The 2024 WNBA draft took place a few days ago and leading the pack to no one's surprise, superstar Caitlin Clark, who was the number one pick. And it's our picture of the week. We get details from our friend Stephanie Gosk. The stars of college basketball proving how hard work pays off. Women matter and we work just as hard as the men. I mean, I'm just happy to be in this position. How exciting is it to start your professional career with this kind of energy around the league? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, you know, incredible. Like, I was just excited to get here and get it started. At the front of the line, Iowa's Caitlin Clark. I think, like, you know, this is a dream. This is something I wrote down on a piece of paper when I was in, like, second grade, like, get a basketball scholarship, play in the WNBA. This week, Caitlin Clark's dream came true. The 22-year-old Iowa phenom was the number one pick by the Indiana Fever in the WNBA draft. I know there would probably be a little bit of a learning curve, but I think always I've had confidence in myself. And that's always kind of what I remind myself is, you know, you're not here by accident. Caitlin Clark's record-breaking final season in the NCAA, turbocharging interest in the game, making women's basketball must-see TV. It surprises me when people are like new to the sport and you know I don't take offense to that if they say I've never watched women's basketball before I'm like yeah you're late to the party like it's always been really good. One of the really great things about this season has been watching all of the little kids most of them little girls who are so inspired to play basketball because of you what does that mean to you? I think that's like the reason you do it and I think you know understanding like how big of an impact that can have on a young girl's life is super important so um, I always try to make as much time as I can for them and just to see them scream your name or have your jersey on, um, that's something that, that never gets old. Something else that never gets old? Seeing Clark drain those threes. You know, every time you go to take one of those logo threes, I think to myself, she's never gonna make that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have confidence then, in me? No, I mean, I, but then you do make it and yeah. I think I should have known she was gonna make that. But <laughs> what goes through your mind right before you take that shot? I think the biggest thing is just confidence. I think sometimes, like, I feel like I'm closer to the basket than I really am, but also, like, the adrenaline gets going, the crowd gets, gets behind you. The jersey is going to change for Caitlin Clark, but the excitement isn't going anywhere. Stephanie, thanks so much. This week marks 100 days to the Paris Olympic Games. Our Kids Edition correspondent, Joaquin, caught up with Grant Hill on the Today Show Plaza who will be leading Team USA basketball in the games. So you just announced one of, if not the greatest, um, USA basketball teams of all time. What are your thoughts on that? Well, we're just excited. We're excited that these incredible athletes are willing to be part of the program, willing to play for us in the Paris Olympics. And I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Uh, we, we feel like this is going to be a very good team, maybe one of the best teams, I, with all due respect, to the 92 team in the 2008 team and all the other great Olympic gold medal teams. Um, but we're excited about this squad and the task at hand. Fans are calling um, this USA team, comparing it to the um, 92 Dream Team. Do you agree with that or? Wow, those are big shoes to fill. That 92 Dream Team was absolutely incredible, iconic. So we'll see. I mean, we, we got to win and we have to play well, but uh, there's incredible talent on this team here in 2024 and uh, some of the best to ever play. So uh, what do you think? Um, I actually think um, I, I really like this team, but I think the 92 GT is okay, unstoppable. That's fair. That's fair. That's um, fair. And since you've retired your legendary NBA career, um, what kept you in the sport of basketball? Well, I, I work in television. I do the March Madness. I call the Final Four. I do television for the NBA. Uh, I have ownership with the Atlanta Hawks, uh, managing director of Team USA. I, I get to stay around the game. I fell in love the game. In the, uh, the, I fell in love with the game when I was your age, and I'm still working around it. And I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world, and I get to be with uh, the men's national team in Paris this summer. How lucky am I? All right, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I appreciate thank it. Thank you. you.
All right, Joaquin, thanks so much. I'm ready. A lot of us around here sporting our Paris caps. All the excitement about the Paris games. Now to our pop quiz. And since we're here in California this week, the question is, what is the capital of California? Is it A, Los Angeles, B, Fresno, or C, Sacramento? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Well, it just happens to turn out that I grew up in this town. We're talking about C, Sacramento. Sacramento is the state capital. It's located in the north central part of the state and a great, great town. Now to a story that caught our eye. The Nashville Zoo just welcomed four new additions, and these baby goats are giving us all a reason to smile. We get more now from our friend Aaron McLaughlin. They are cute, incredibly curious, they're so smart, so spunky, so sassy sometimes. And full of personality. The Nashville Zoo just welcomed the birth of these four baby goats last month. And since then, they've been having a ball. They are Nigerian dwarf goats. They're originally from Africa, but they're completely domesticated. These four that we just had born now make seven that we've had born here at the Nashville Zoo. And they are beautiful, healthy, bouncing baby goats. The zoo says the baby goats who are healthy and gaining weight every single day have become quite a hit with visitors. They are just silly animals, very trainable. They're just so playful and they're great for our guests to interact with. People love coming to see them. The zookeepers even got the chance to vote for their names. We voted and we've gone with Winnie the Pooh names, which is very, very cute. We have Winnie and he looks like he's wearing a little t-shirt, so it's perfect. We have Piglet who has a pink nose, Tigger who is on the orange side and very bouncy, and then Eeyore who has a gray, beautiful silver coat, just like his mom. Did you know a baby goat is also called a kid? Young females are dolings while young males are bucklings. A group of goats is also called a herd. And guess what else? Goats are not picky when it comes to eating. The goats will eat just about everything, but we make sure that they have a nice healthy diet here at the Nashville Zoo. They eat grain and hay. Also love special things like we gave them kiwi the other day, sweet potatoes, carrots, even a little bit of honey sometimes. So we just keep them guessing and keep them as healthy as possible. Because goats are domesticated, they can also be kept as pets. A lot of people love to keep them as pets. They are wonderfully smart, intelligent animals, full of attitude and just bounce all over the place. Bouncing around and giving us all a reason to smile. Aaron, thanks so much. Let's turn now to this week's Spotlight, and there is a new video game out with a royal twist. We're talking about Princess Peach. Princess Peach Showtime just came out for Nintendo Switch. It's the first time in nearly two decades that Princess Peach is starring in her own game. Our Kids Edition correspondent Marsden has details. And now, everyone. Princess Peach. In the latest game from Nintendo, Princess Peach is taking the stage for her starring role. <laughs> Princess Peach Showtime follows Peach and her toads as they save the Sparkle Theater from some brand new enemies, Grape and the Sour Bun. The wicked Grape and the Sour Bunch made an unexpected entrance to steal the shows. I went to the launch party at Nintendo New York City to play the game, sample some sweet treats, and meet Princess Peach herself. After that, I sat down with Devin Pritchard, who works for Nintendo of America, to ask her about Princess Peach and her latest adventures. This is Princess Peach's first starring role in 20 years. Tell us about her role throughout Nintendo history. So Peach has been around as long as Mario, and she was first playable in Super Mario Brothers 2. You know her as Princess Peach, but once upon a time, she was known as Princess Toadstool. And she's also known as the ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom, but did you know that she's also an adventurer? She's been a kart racer, a tennis player, and a golfer. I always play as Princess Peach in Mario Kart, so I knew about her 
kart racing career firsthand. Tell us a bit about what makes the gameplay unique, what kids and grown-ups look forward to in Princess Peach Showtime. You can look forward to being the hero in a very grand adventure. <gasps> Peach transforms into a range of unique roles that are cute and they're cool, and each transformation comes with its own ability. When Peach transforms into Mighty Peach, she has the abilities of a superhero. And when she transforms into Patissier Peach, she has the abilities of a pastry chef. She can make cookies, she can decorate cakes. What is your favorite Peach costume from Princess Peach Showtime? Mine is the baker, Patisserie Peach. Oh, I love Patisserie Peach because I like to bake. Um, mine is Cowgirl Peach. And I think that's my favorite Peach transformation because Peach rides a horse and she uses a lasso. We just celebrated Women's History Month in March. Why is it important to feature female lead characters like Peach in games? Well, Peach transforms throughout this game. She's a cowgirl, a sword fighter, a ninja, an ice skater, and it's really great to see a female hero like Peach represented in gaming because through her transformations, Peach reminds us that girls can be whoever they want to be. Whether that's a ninja, a superhero, or even a detective, you can be whoever you want to be in Princess Peach Showtime. For Nightly News Kids Edition, I'm Marsden. Back to you, Lester. All right, Marsden, thanks so much for that. Finally, we want to introduce you to a dance team here in Los Angeles who is showing us there are no limits to what you can do. Our friend Elwin Lopez has the story. Moving with your favorite song can look a lot like this. I want to be a roulette when it's blow up. One, two. Hands and arms up from one side to another. It's sometimes the rhythm that's hard to get, but these girls have it. They make me feel amazing, powerful, and beautiful. But dancing is something they worried they would never be able to do. I was told I'd never dance again, I should stop, and that I wasn't going to be taken seriously, that I wouldn't even be seen in the room. Kaylee Bays was 12 years old when she first struggled with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. That meant early on, even walking would be difficult. I wasn't allowed to dance in the recital because I was using a wheelchair. I took the costumes and my mom put them on a shelf and I didn't touch them thinking I would never dance again and it was painful. You could have done it, but they had no idea how to put it together. Nobody knew at that time, just because again, there was no representation for people like me in mainstream media. And that's what you want to change. Yes, absolutely. Cue music. And that's exactly what she did. Kaylee just became the first contestant to use a wheelchair on So You Think You Can Dance. It's a yes for me. She's also one of the newest performers in the roulette, a wheelchair dance team empowering women with disabilities. Snap one. Josie Scott is the youngest of the group, finding it after she was injured five years ago. I found these women who are like, if we walk again, great, but if we don't, we have amazing lives anyway. And that was really like a mindset and perspective shift for me. Three, uh, four. A much needed shift also for team captain Connor Lundius. She first discovered the women through social media, then attended what's now known as Roulette's Experience. Every summer, hundreds of women and girls jet to LA from around the world to participate in this four day event. It's life changing to just be in a room with 200 other women that are like them in so many ways. I just think it's really important. Hi everyone, how are you? Chelsea Hill is the one behind the launch of the roulettes, uniting women with disabilities, creating what she calls a sisterhood after she survived a drunk driving accident. You are single-handedly, if I might say, mm -hmm. changing lives. Mm -hmm. What is that like for you? There's a level of understanding and a level of commitment to the friendship that like is so 
indescribable, you know? Like, I'd do anything for these girls. A bond that goes beyond dancing on wheels. <laughs> proving that pain can not only transform you, but lead you into a life beyond your wildest dreams. Looking back at that 17-year-old girl who was paralyzed in a hospital bed, what would you tell her? I would tell her, you're gonna get married, you're gonna find the love of your life, you're gonna have babies, and you're gonna dance. Did it turn out even better than the life she had imagined for herself before the accident? 1,000%. Elwin, thanks so much. Well, that is going to do it for us here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, feel free to email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com. We'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at Nightly Kids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. And so long from Universal Studios Hollywood. Bye, everyone. And bye, guys. <laughs> well, you never know who you're going to run into here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Hey, guys, thanks for coming out and saying hi to our crew. My pleasure. Hello from Hollywood. Anything you want to say to our kids viewers, Dracula? Catch you soon, my friends. <laughs> and by the way, you look much taller in person. <laughs> Man, a few <laughs> words, too. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye, darling. See you soon. <laughs>